Let me read to you a passage from the 14th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 22 to 33. It's the Gospel for the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. St. Matthew writes, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are the Son of God. That's from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. And what does it suggest to us? Well, you know, it is very clear that a principal lesson of our gospel scene today is that faith in Jesus is the great act that God expects of us, his children. Jesus is the Son of God, as he demonstrated so clearly in the event portrayed in the gospel that I read. He came walking to the disciples on the water and calmed the sea after he had joined them. Courage, he said, it is I. He said to Simon, Why did you doubt? Our Lord is asking for a full and complete faith in him and in his word. The thought of Simon asking our Lord to bid him come to him across the water and then proceeding to do so at the invitation of Jesus reminds us that we are called to stake everything on our faith in Christ. He is to be the only true and certain basis of our life. His word is what we follow, and we obey his word because of our faith in him. Simon took his first steps in this direction during the storm, but then, at the sight of the storm, his faith in our Lord faltered. All this is to say that the most basic act of our lives, which serves as the foundation of all our other acts, should be our act of faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus is, in God's intention, the foundation of our life, and we ought to strive to make it so every day from the first moment of rising. However, there is an aspect of this which ought to be clearly appreciated. Yes, this act of faith, so basic in the life of the Christian, is a deeply personal thing. It is the foundation of my personal relationship with God. And yes, it is my act, my personal act of faith. Now that having been said, we must immediately add that this is not the whole story. It is not just a personal act of mine. That is to say, my faith in Jesus is the very faith that the entire church shares in. What I believe is what we all believe, all of us who make up Christ's church. The creed is not only my creed, but it is our creed. The Apostles' Creed, which is typically the creed of the individual's baptism, begins with the words, I believe. At the same time, the Nicene Creed, which is typically the creed of the church gathered in worship, begins with the words, we believe. The faith of the individual Christian is to be the faith of the church which Christ founded, and the mission of the Church is to bring this one faith to the nations. All this is to say 
that my act of faith in Jesus is not just something I have arrived at myself and which I determine for myself. If we think of our faith in Jesus as a purely personal act, we might instinctively imagine it as isolated from the faith of the church. And that being my own act of faith, it therefore is for me to determine just what I believe. We might also be tempted to think that the church, or rather a church, is simply a body of faithful who happen to have a similar faith to mine. Because faith is very personal and it is a matter between me and Jesus. But no. In the plan of God, I have received my faith via, through and from the church. My faith is derived from the church. Of course, it comes as a gift from God, but through the church. In this sense, the church is my mother, or rather our mother. Being our mother from whom we have received the faith, the church is also my teacher, or rather our teacher. The church is mother and teacher, not only to me, but to all of us who believe. For this reason, we not only say, I believe at the start of the Apostles' Creed, but also we believe at the start of the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed was formulated by the Church in order to expose and exclude errors about Christ's person, and in order to insist that the I believe uttered by each person be identical with the we believe uttered by the whole Church. We are reminded of this by our Gospel scene today which I read earlier, in which all the disciples together arrived at and professed faith in Jesus as the Son of God. That boat which received the presence of Jesus provides us with an image of the church. In it is Simon Peter with the others, and Christ is in the midst. The faith of each in the boat is the faith of all, the faith of the incipient church, and Christ is there with them. So, yes, the Christian nourishes his own faith in Jesus by daily prayer, assiduous reading of the scriptures, by a devout reception of the sacraments, and by a good and holy daily life. But he also constantly looks to the faith of the church, that faith of those in the bark of Simon, together with the twelve. There, no matter how buffeted the boat may be, Jesus dwells in their midst. This faith of the church is the faith I receive and by which I am constantly guided. I must never live my faith in Jesus in isolation from the church Christ founded and in which he constantly abides, whatever be the storms that assail her. My faith has come through the church, who is my mother and teacher of faith. In our Gospel scene today, our Lord, as he does on numerous other occasions in the Gospels, stresses the absolutely central place of faith in the life of his disciple. Why did you doubt? He said to Simon, We must not doubt him, neither must we doubt his word and his teaching. He and his word come to us in the ministry and life of the church he founded, that church where Simon is to be found. Our very personal and individual faith coming via the church must be guided by the church, which in the plan of God is our mother and our teacher in faith.